How does it start? With a high five? Boom. High. You know, if you aim oh. for the elbow, it'll always be crisp. It's aim a for my elbow. Critical hit each time. Someone yeah. is sleeping in another room. Did you know that? No. I saw them in the room in the dark. I'm pretty sure there's a human sleeping in there. Oh, it's probably Tyler then. I don't think so. I started the recording. This Welcome we back, start. everybody. We're here to talk about movie. Yes, we're going to uh, discuss our top ten uh, movies of the last decade. So 2010 through 2019. 2019. The end of 2019. The best movies of the decade for us personally. And possibly of all time, honestly. Of all yeah. time. Of that decade. Of our lifetime. Of our lifetime. No. There, there are probably some movies that are on the list. Uh, there's much my, the bits. Uh, better life movies that have come out way too in our much lifetime. Re- way too much research to do. Um, it takes a lot to make a good movie nowadays, uh, even with all the resources and billions of dollars thrown into movies. Um, but sometimes there are special ones that come around where you uh, least expect it. Um, but not here. Ours are all corporate media movies, probably all Disney. No. Nope. nope. Me neither. I'm going to call now, even if it might not be reflected in my top ten. I honestly can't remember if it is. A24 is hands down the best movie studio of the decade. They've been dropping Even singers. if it's not like represented by your list? Yeah, I, like, I can't remember if a lot of A24 movies made it in. Uh-huh. But just, in general, A24, one, didn't exist until 2013. Right. And since its inception... They've been, been making fucking hit dropping hit. hits. Just yeah, absolutely. Indie movie got. Um, so growing to be less indie in a way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our lists then. Um, do you want to do rock, paper, scissors for Yes, who? what we're going to do is we're each going to... Well, we'll do rock, paper, scissors for to who see starts. who goes first, and then we'll trade off back and forth. Back and forth. We'll do like so, 10, 10, 9, 9, yes. 8, 8. If we have something to say... Now, no, like let's say like my number nine is your number five. Okay. Would you rather say it there? Be like, oh, that's in my list. Or no. Not say it. Don't until, say it. So don't just say pretend. Anything. Yeah, that we it have might to. Not even be we in your have list. to just, put on oh, our wow, own. <laughs> just, oh, that was a good one. Just. <laughs> we'll, you have we'll to see how long we last in that room. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Um, okay. I doubt that that's going to happen, though. Maybe it will. Who knows? We'll see. I think our lists are going to be vastly different. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Okay, so then let's do rock, paper, scissors. Best two out of so three. So the winner has to go first. The winner chooses who goes first. Okay. All right. Uh, are we doing it on shoot, or are we doing it on... You do, tell me when, and I'll put a symbol We'll do it on shoot. So rock, okay. paper, scissors, and then shoot. Okay. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. So you got the first one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock. What was, what was that? That was paper. Uh-oh. Was paper. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't do it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, you, win. you get so, to go first. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm loading up the list. Don't look at it. I'm not. I can't see your phone from here. Start again. Number 10. Number 10 for Laszlo. The Avengers, 2012. Okay. Now, my reasoning is, even if it's not my favorite of the this decade's Marvel films, mm-hmm. they all owe it to the existence of this adventure yeah. set off the saga we've had to experience all decade. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was considering putting Infinity War in there, because mm-hmm. I love that movie so much, but Infinity War can't happen without the Avengers mm-hmm. 2012. And so that really set off, I think, like, if... Like, if society lasts long enough to have film history in the next couple decades, yeah. when they look back on the 2010s, it will be defined by the Marvel and Disney. But a lot of that Marvel saga will forever be part of, like, defining 2010s in film. Absolutely, and I think no matter what Martin Scorsese says, the, the Marvel movies are impactful. You know, yeah. it's not. Oh, they're still it's good not movies. Just, like, look at Black Panther was nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. And you you have um, the huge and very talented director Ryan Coogler behind that. Ryan and, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I agree with you um, that, and I agree with what you say too about the Avengers being the foundation 
for all of that because it was it was a risk at that time. It was unheard of of having. Do you remember how we first saw the Avengers? Yeah, we went to we went to a fucking movie festival. Too. Yeah, we saw all the previous movies. <laughs> what it was nine of them. Pretty much, it went the Hulk, Iron, Iron Man. Man, Iron Man, two, two Thor, Thor, Captain America. Captain America. At the time, there was only five, maybe. Or was Thor last? It was one of those two, and I then this was one Avengers. Of <laughs> yeah. And then and I remember yeah, we got to see everything that leads up to You saved my seat because during the entirety of Iron Man 2, I walked out and went to a cafe. <laughs> I was like, I don't need to see this movie again. Iron Man 2 is not the best. That's my main memory of Iron Man 2 now, forever. It's just like, oh, when that movie was coming on theaters, I walked out. And I <laughs> took a two-hour break from the marathon, and you stayed in the theater the whole time. I remember that. It's I That was like my third or fourth time seeing Iron Man 2 as well, so Damn. I was, I, I just, didn't, because it was that summer and Iron Man was huge, you know, and it was the sequel to one of the biggest movies of 2008, 2009. Um, I just realized the movie I've seen the most times consecutively in theaters, or like, in terms of like numbers, in this decade, and also in my lifetime, is not on my top ten list. Is it Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes. How many times did you end up seeing I that? I saw Guardians of the Galaxy in theaters 14 times. Damn. But again, I didn't put it in because it's part of the Avengers package. And so I put Avengers as the best movie of the decade. Well, one, so it, 10. Be, it wouldn't be where it is. Because it the leads Avengers. to those good movies. Right. And Wait. In a way, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy is its own Avengers. Let me check and make sure. Group, okay, ensemble, yeah. cast. For a second, I good. got worried. I was like, wait, I think I did put Infinity War in later, but not did. Okay, anyway. I've said for Avengers, for me, number 10, defined the decade, but not necessarily my favorite movie of the decade. Defined a it entire defined like a new generation of, of filmmaking. Film yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely. All right. Is it, is it my turn now? Your or? turn for number 10. All right. So number 10 on my list is Get Out. Ooh. Yep. Uh, I forgot to put that one in there. I added that to my list uh, last minute just because nice. I, I I didn't think it would be on my list and the more I kept seeing it pop up, the more I kept actually thinking about the movie and how uh, it came out in like what, February? Um, so just middle of nowhere really and it was huge and um, I remember I initially so. did not want to see it. Really? Because the trailer convinced me it was a, a, was scary, a, a plain, movie. scary movie. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to see it. I don't like scary. And then mm-hmm. someone was like, "You gotta see this movie." And I saw it probably like four times since it was out. It's that. worth it's amazing. It. It's so good. It's uh, fresh writing, yes, um, definitely, and very likable characters. Even the ones that are supposed to be like unlikable, um, like like Bradley Whitford's character. Of uh, he he's hilarious. I love that man. Um, was he the dad? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know some of those actors. I'm like, I'm gonna take a guess and say. Yeah, he was the dad. He was the, the brother. Um, oh, I've seen him before. Yeah, he he's been in a couple things. Um, I don't remember. Look it up on Google. Name. Send it to us. Yeah. Look. Uh, In the comments below. A- anyone Ooh. listening, please uh, check our facts too. Um, but not too harsh. Not too harsh. Um, where were Good we? Good music. Good music. The, it was, it was the closest I've, like, the strongest I've emotionally rooted for a character in a long time. Is that, that's, that, did that movie help popularize, um, Childish Gambino's new album at that time, too? Was Redbone? It Bone? must have. I was going to bring up, because of that movie, I downloaded the song Redbone. Uh-huh. And to this date, in my previous phone, up until this new phone I just got, it's my most played song in my phone, like, of all time. Wow. So... Yeah, so definitely help. What year did that movie come out? 2017? I want to say 20... Maybe. It was February, it wouldn't have been 2016, because I saw that much later than... 2016 was the year I went to Morocco. I can actually double check right now. Yeah, I wrote the movie years, too. Uh, It would be right around here, if it were 2017. Yep. March 1st is when I saw it, so it came out February. February 2017. Yep. Really good. Jordan Peele's debut directorial role, too. Damn, I forgot about that. 
forgot that that was yeah. how he fucking broke and out. A mainstream comedy actor. He was high off of Key and Peele. Oh, man. And then the first movie he bangs out, Oscar. Damn. Him. Or not And movie. Us is said to be very good. I, I saw, saw it. I saw Us. Us. For the same reason I originally wasn't going to see Get Out. It was like, it looks too scary for me. <laughs> so I never went. Us is but, pretty creepy, but uh, I wouldn't say it's the same level as Get Out, just because it's a little more complex with its story. And um, I liked the cast, though. Cast was good. I love. Um, what's the lead actor's name? He, uh, gosh, he was also in Black Panther. Oh, are you talking about? Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. can't remember his name off the top of my head. But he plays uh, M'Baku in Black Yes, Panther. yes, yes. Uh, he is fantastic in that Not role. Um, Elizabeth he, Olsen. Or no, no, what's her name? She's also in The Handmaid's Tale and most importantly Mad Men. Christina Hendricks. No, no, no. That's the only person I remember besides John Hamm. It's not, I know it's not Elizabeth Olsen, but it's not, that can't be her name. Is it one of the Olsen triplets? No, she's... I'm gonna look it up. This one I'm gonna look, I'll look up in Baku as well. Okay. Oh, I can just look up us cast. Done. Ignore that car alarm. It's just somebody breaking into my car. Oh, it's I done. Doubt it. Us. Winston Duke is the lead actor. Winston Duke. Fantastic. I'm talking about Elizabeth Moss. Elizabeth. I like her a lot. She's in a lot of good stuff. Lupita Nyong'o is in this. Oh yeah, yeah she she's, she's the she's, she's the main I'm, character. I'm assuming she's very good. Yes. Yeah, she's. Awesome. She's also really creepy in that movie. Ooh, I don't like that. Because. Because they all. They all play themselves. Yeah. yeah, it's really really creepy. Um, but just like I said, really like complex unnecessarily to try to sell you this world. Hmm. Um, but this isn't a mo- uh, a podcast about us. Talking down about other movies. No. This is us talking up about the best, the movies, best movies of the, of the 2010s. So, <laughs> get out is my it. number 10. We're moving on to my number 9. Your number 9. My number 9 is Paddington, but I'd like to make a correction and say Paddington 2. Oh, so, okay, I thought, finally I answered my question. It because. I was originally going to put just Paddington in because Paddington 2 can't exist without Paddington. Uh-huh. But of the two, I like Paddington 2 a lot more because of the character Phoenix. Um, and Hugh Grant's character. Okay. His first name is Phoenix Buchanan. Okay. I, fucking character is great. Yeah. Paddington movies are masterpieces of cinema. I don't care what my old <laughs> housemates said. <laughs> um, Did they not like it? They haven't even seen it. Because they're like, it's a kid's movie. I didn't go. And I'm like, you're missing out. I was like, I'll, anytime you want, I will screen this movie with you guys. Heartwarming. Heartwarming the, is the It's an age word. where I think we've entered with movies like Paddington, an age of sincerity and an age of post-cynicism. Mm-hmm. So it's like post, post-modern post or like moving back into sincerity or what I call like the age of wholesome. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed. I've been hoping that someone else would do a video essay on this. Because I have not yet been able to articulate it, but I think we are like in a cultural age of like the wholesome era. We are very into like wholesome, sincere content again. Yeah, and I think it must be like a line of like post cynicism. Have you seen any other movie um, that would fall under that wholesome category? Well, you have things like "Won't You Be My Neighbor," the documentary. Yeah, which led into the Tom Hanks film. Yeah. Um. I can't think of any other examples, <laughs> but I know, I know it's out there. It's just, not just in film, but in all kind of meme culture and subculture, I think, mm-hmm. is growing. At least, I don't know, within me, at least, to just move towards preferring So maybe Hollywood will start goodness. to cash in no longer on the emotion of nostalgia, but the uh, emotion, emotion of, of just wholesomeness. Being nice. <laughs> I don't necessarily want... I hope it doesn't the become to cash a thing. In. I'm just saying. Yeah, it's a I hope it do- that doesn't become a thing, and I hope the Paddington movies just stay their special own. They thing. were just on their own. They just hit very good in their timing. Absolutely, for a lot of people. Absolutely, it's very hard to hit that wholesomeness, and um, I think 
And really good comedy, too. Paddington has some good lines. Like, good, I don't care what age you are, just funny lines. Yeah. It's a good, it's fun it's for good the humor actors. for all ages, I believe. You have some big actors in there, but they're just there to have fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's a good movie. Recommend for it. For your soul. Paddington and Paddington Three out of five. Mm. <laughs> five out of five. Five out of five. I I went all around London to take pictures of these Paddington statues, and I have a Paddington 50 pence coin that I've kept with me. Mm-hmm. Boom, Robert, throw those up. Yeah, Robert. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna text Robert a photo of my coin, and he's gonna put it up over here. And then over here we'll have the selfies of me going around London. Spent a whole day. My hand looks big in this angle. Whoa! Your hand is big. Good. Um. No, yeah. Because they did like a couple years before I moved to England. They did a promotional thing. Mm-hmm. They had like 11 or 13 different Paddington statues made out of different materials with different like designs. Uh-huh. And they were all over London, so you would do this trail that would also lead to like major sightseeing things. But I think since I was in 2014, when the first movie came out, mm-hmm. they have not, they've kind of like dissipated them, so I was only able to find two or three of them. One of them is like in the lobby of a Hilton, another one's under some bridge in like a dockyards. Good stuff, and then you of course have the main statue of Paddington yeah. station. Yeah, I would I would like to see that myself someday, someday. Um, yeah, I definitely need to rewatch those movies because I am. I'll in, rewatch them. I am I'm in need of some good wholesome content. It's good. I feel like that movie, and then Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary. Yeah, yeah. are good movies to rewatch every now and then because I feel like they're very grounding. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and so it's like it's like let me rewatch it again because it'll inspire me to be a good person again. Like when you catch yourself becoming cynical and mean again, it's like hold on. And then watch Paddington, remember? Yeah, it's gotta be kind and polite, and everything, and everything will, be, will right. be right. Yep, everything will be right. Be a good person. Good choice. Very What's your number choice. nine? My number nine, <clears throat> in lieu of. Um, your choice, I think uh, they're very comparable. My number nine choice is uh, Shin Godzilla. Ooh! <laughs> I remember that. So, um, a very good movie. Uh, and for a long time, Godzilla fan like myself, uh, it was a. It was the first Godzilla movie in like 10 years. Was uh, it? Yeah, the last one was 2005. And then there was the American one in 2014. Right, but so you're not counting that. But one. I'm not counting that one because this one was actually made by Toho. Oh, I see. The original Godzilla uh, studio. You're wearing Godzilla sweater right now. I'm wearing yeah, I'm wearing my like, Godzilla versus King Kong sweater. Um, That's coming up soon. Yeah, next. Right? Yeah, uh-huh. it got delayed. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. But <laughs> yeah. hey, whatever. Hey, it's not like it delayed. It's about to be and the it's best about movie to be the best. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, yeah, Shin Godzilla is a great movie uh, that involves a giant monster, and the, ultimately the story is how uh, government is slow, and practically because of it, they cause more damage than they do uh, intend to protect people. And I, that really struck a chord with me, um, not only because I love Godzilla and was having fun watching him utterly destroy Tokyo in completely new ways. The but I hate the government, and I thought it was a really good message from a really great director, uh, Hideaki Anno, who also did the Neon Genesis Ooh. Evangelion movies and TV shows. I've yeah, actually me never too. seen those. Yeah, I've me neither, but I feel it's memes, fucking insane. <laughs> I bet. The music is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that theme. Um, and I, I really hope they do more uh, of those type of movies. Um, there's been talks of it going on and not going on. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll do one someday. You better. I'll do a You'll Godzilla do. movie. You'll be the first good American Godzilla I'll be the first. Am- well, hold on. I liked the last one. <laughs> I liked Godzilla too. Did you see it? You were in England. came out this year. But I, I don't think I saw it. I would not say it's my favorite movie. Um, There's a new Godzilla movie that came out while I was in England. King of the Monsters, yeah. 
he faces King Ghidorah. Are we going to have to watch this? <laughs> Damn, I forgot that I even came out. Yeah, with King Ghidorah and Mothra and Rodan. They all fight. Yeah, I didn't see that. I it's see that it's pretty cool. Um, but definitely not my favorite movie of the year. Um, is that all you want to say on Godzilla? Yeah, that's all I have to say on Shin Godzilla is go see it if you were ready for like a really cool uh, monster movie. Number eight for me. You're going to like this one. Okay. What We Do in the Shadows. Wow, okay. It defined an element in my comedy. Okay. I think it was one of my first experiences to a Taika Waititi movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd seen Flight of the Concords, and I'm assuming Taika had to do with that in the past. Mm-hmm. But What We Do in the Shadows, you can watch that movie countless times. Yeah. It's always good. I don't care. Like, like a lot of different friend groups, too, because it's just fun. Mm-hmm. And again, it's such good, quick, smart writing for the jokes yeah. and a beautiful premise. I love what we do in the shadows so much. I was originally going to put in Dinner for Schmucks because I'm like, it's not the best movie ever, but a defined piece of my comedy. It was always funny to me. Right. And then I remember what we do in the shadows. I'm like, it's an even better comedy. I'll put that <laughs> one in there. That Much better. And to so they have one type of YTD movie there. Because I was going to put Boy in. Uh-huh. I've only seen it a couple times. It's from 2010. Yeah. I didn't see it in 2010. I only saw it a couple years ago. That doesn't matter. But that movie, if this wasn't like my personal favorite movies of the decade, I think Boy is one of the best movies of the decade. It's not on my list at all, but... Right. But is it? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's not. So it's part <laughs> of the, what we do in the shadows count. Yeah, uh, another great movie. Um, Taika Waititi just dropped one of the best movies of 2019. I feel like that's what that's what that that movie is really what started uh, Taika's climb up. Oh yeah, because um, after that he got he did Hunt for the Willow People, yeah, which is that, that one's personally my favorite Taika. That's good. I've only seen it once, Sam but Neal. I've seen it more often. I'd probably be like, oh. I remember the first time I saw it. Like, this is the greatest movie. It was, mm-hmm. it was probably the best movie of that year. Yeah. I don't even remember what year it is. That movie definitely made my top 20, but it's not in my top 10. I think that had to be 2016 or 17. Probably 17. Yeah. Because that's when I saw it was 2017. I remember... So you got nominated for Oscar, right? No, I saw it 2018. So it was 2017 it came out, because it was nominated for an Oscar. Really good movie. But, Great uh, movie. What We Do in the Shadows is a fantastic uh, mockumentary, yes. which hasn't which been is done one of my in a while. Styles too. Yeah, um, surprisingly, surprisingly, it hasn't been done in a movie format when it's so popular in television format. Um, so it's kind of cool to see that and to see it yeah, done which is so weird well. To see it now, all I'll take it here is devolve into another TV series. Because yeah. they were originally going to do mo- the sequel as a movie, and I was hyped for it. And then they're like, we're going to drop this TV series I- instead. And even though there's literally a character named Laszlo, <laughs> I have not seen a single episode of it. Because no, the trailer either, kind I of... I felt like... I, like, I don't want to... Well, it was American. I wanted to see those... T- um, and my thing, too, is like I don't want new characters. Mm-hmm. I just wanted a sequel to, to see the same characters again. Yeah. Because they were going to expand on the werewolf part. Right. Which I don't know if they do on the show. I would hope they because do. Because the whole point was the end that one friend was going to be the link between the vampires and the werewolves. And right. The movie 2 would have been about the werewolves. Right. Um, they, they, they didn't do that. We'll have to check that out sometime. We'll have to actually watch it. But I feel like it will not be at the same level that the movie is. Understandable. Right. It's also like years after he made that movie, so you're probably not in the mood for it anyway. What year did it come out? Twenty. 20- <laughs> 14, wow, it feels older. Really? 2014 was a good year for movies. Mm-hmm. I'd say, I would say every year is a good year for movies. I know, but like in this Sonic decade movies especially... this is a good yes, year for movies. I feel like 2014 onward, we've been having some pretty fucking good movies. Yeah. Like, say what you will about, like, oh, the 60s and the 70s. I mean, they have great movies. It's like, the 2010s will... I think legitimately be a good decade of movies mm-hmm. as history goes on. Because mm-hmm. so we've had so many good indie movies. Yeah. Um, and we had talked about this before, how we we would say, like, because of the rise of 
these tent pole blockbusters, uh, it really shines a light for indie stars and yep. directors to shine. Um, and because people will all start going to the movies looking for things other than the giant superhero movies just because you get so tired of it and you want to be fresh. specialized movie theaters now too, like Alamo. Mm-hmm. They yeah. They dedicate the, themselves to exactly. making sure those are being screened too alongside the blockbusters. And that's fantastic. And I think people it's are so starting nice. to get with I mean, look. I remember the, the old Harkins Camel View. <sighs> Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Love that place. Love that place. Um, what was the last movie you saw there? I can't remember. I know. I, can't I know my remember. last movie you saw there. What was it? A final screening of Cinema Paradiso. It was the last movie I saw there. Perfect. They closed it down. What a perfect right? ending. That was the first time I saw that movie, I think, like in, in its entirety. Yeah. Wow. That's one of my favorite movies, but it's not no, in this decade. In this decade. Sorry. Cinema Paradiso 2 coming out 2023. Um, let's get back on track. Back on track, I was talking about what we do, what in, we the do in the shadows. What scene sticks out to you the most when you think of that movie? The first scene that comes to my mind is the cat with the human face. <laughs> <laughs> After yeah. the of all the memes about cats now. Um, right. Just anything, I don't know, I just the whole story arcs of each of the characters too. Mm-hmm. There's so many good scenes. I love the when the cops come in. And it, you keep leading up to, you think that they're like, oh, hold on, I caught that vampire. And they're like, oh, there's a safety hazard here. Yeah. It's hard to explain. <laughs> it anyway. It's very uh, New Zealand comedy. Uh, yeah. Um, Tiger has a very distinct style, and that shows throughout all of his movies. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to see Boy. Yeah, I haven't seen Boy. We gotta see that. Let's see it today. Okay. I don't know how, but let's see it. We can try to find it somewhere legally. YouTube.com. Um, Slash Tiger YTD. Yeah. He, he uploaded it to <laughs> his uploaded YouTube channel. Also. Hey guys, I uploaded my new uh, YouTube. The short that he was nominated for an Oscar for is like a prequel to, or like related to, Boy. Okay. They used the same actors. I don't know if they're what? actually the same characters, but... He just used the same child actors for the whole movie. We'll have to check it out. He's good. So that was your number eight? Eight. So we're now on to your number eight. My number eight is Wolf of Wall Street. I absolutely love this movie. It's um, an amazingly paced, uh, kind of disgusting look of uh, capitalism in the... It had to be the 80s. Yeah, it was through the 80s. And uh, especially and on Wall Street and kind of just shows you how realistic it is and how much uh, locker room talk there was. Uh, it, it, it inspired me to read the book, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, and all, all everything that happens in the movie happens in the book, too. It's a first-hand report, so um, it's pretty nuts. That guy Jordan is Jordan Belford is a fucking madman, <laughs> like quite literally. And the fact that he's still kind of like just out there promoting himself still is kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, it's the way that he's but essentially got away with it. All he's of now it profiting off of it. Yep, it's really. Uh, but I gotta hand it to. Martin Scorsese Marty. And, uh, for directing a fantastic film, one of my favorite directors. Um, but Leonardo DiCaprio Especially. fucking knocked it out of the park. Like how he made this gross, slimy man so charismatic and likable throughout the whole three hour long movie is stunning. And the fact that he didn't get his Oscar for that made me upset. But he won it for Revenant eventually, which I didn't care for as much as uh, Wolf True, of Wall Street. True, yeah, he should have won for Wolf. Because that's hard. That's tough to do, man. Like, for three hours, you have to convince the, the audience to be on your side while you're doing all that shit. Um, and you still want to see him succeed all the way to the end of the movie. Yeah. Um, and it also introduced us to Margot Robbie. That's one of her first roles. Yeah. Uh, and she's doing great. And now she ha- is has her own movie, uh, The Birds of Prey. Well, she's, she already did Itania, and that's 
also an amazing movie. Did she produce that one too? I didn't oh, see that. Oh, I have that. no idea if she produced it. I'm just saying that's a good oh. movie that she got to act in. Yeah. I, um, I, didn't, I didn't see that one. No, but. I think that she's producing Birds of Prey. Is Pretty big. Big move by her. That's a good <laughs> yeah. movie because it'll definitely get watched. Yeah, for sure. Even if you hated Suicide Squad as much as this person here like, <laughs> would not stop talking about how much you hated it. For a good year or We'll so. probably go see Birds of Prey. At least out of curiosity. Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, I'll probably see it. To support Margo. Do for you, Margo. And Ewan McGregor. That's right. I like Ewan McGregor a lot. I'll go see it for him. See how kooky he gets. <laughs> Who Hopefully does he, has he fun. play? He's a... I wanted to say Taskmaster, but that's a villain in Black Widow. Yeah. Um, I feel Black like... Black Mask or something? Does he... Uh, I don't know. I'm not as well versed in DC, so I honestly have no idea who he is. They should make him uh, that character, the Creeper. Ooh. Do you remember from uh, Batman? No. In the Batman animated series, he wears like a... He's like half naked and he wears like this giant fur. I don't know. And it's like gloves, green or pink gloves, dyed green hair. And he's always like... He's like a night jockey, night disc jockey. And, uh, Never heard of this character. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty funny. <laughs> Great, I'll look him up. <laughs> um, yeah, Wolf of Wall Street, fantastic film. If you haven't seen it and have three hours to spare, go ahead and check it, it out. Long. It is long. But it's insane. It's yeah, it movie. keeps you entertained throughout the whole thing. Um, when my dad saw that movie, all he said to me was, I remember Qualoos. <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, oh, Jonah Hill in that movie is also oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, dude, Jonah Hill. Um, I almost bumped a movie into my list, but I didn't make it in. That Jonah Hill, again, did fucking amazing in. When he acted in? Yeah. What movie? Um, don't worry, you won't get far on foot. I didn't see that you one. You never saw a movie. I've only seen it once by myself in theaters, and it hit me, and I still think about it every now and then. It's so good, and it should be in my list, but it's just, I only saw it once. Yeah. And I think you would really, really like it. But <laughs> Jonah Hill in that movie is fucking amazing. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix, well, I don't know if he stole the show. I feel like Jonah Hill might have still stolen the show in that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonah Hill is the leader of his of Joaquin Phoenix's character's AA uh, meetings. I don't really want to give the plot of it because I didn't know much going in either. But I believe it's a biopic about a real man hmm. who's a real comic strip artist who did a lot of edgy or like slightly offensive comedy but about himself since he was a man in a wheelchair. There's a lot of comedy I that makes people uncomfortable that, yeah. because no one wants to talk about it or acknowledge it. But I mean, And that's where it, why it's called Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far Off. That's, that's a line from one of his more famous comic strips. Gotcha. Is that sounds familiar. It's in the, the, the comic strip image. Is it's, they're in the middle of the desert with like a swore cactus. And there's two cowboy sheriffs and like a fucking empty wheelchair stuck in the dirt. And then it's just one of the cops is saying, the cop, the worry you won't get far on foot. That's, uh, you know Gary Larson, who did the Far Side comics? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Wow. What about him? <laughs> And that just sounds like that type of humor. Let me look up the name of the dude that... Uh, don't worry, you won't get far foot the book. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot is a movie about John Callahan. Hmm. Yeah, he's a wheelchair-using comic artist, but it's more movie of um, his AA stuff. Well, More we'll have to check it out. Then. It's so good. You gotta watch it. All right, so I'll defer my my turn to you now. All right. So number seven. Number seven, we have... Let me get back to my folder. Ooh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2018. Last night, I moved it in. Yeah. I was like, I can't believe I didn't put this in my top ten yesterday. Yeah, so absolutely. in the middle of the night, I edited it. Um... This is my favorite Spider-Man movie ever. It's mm-hmm. one. Of, it's not even Marvel, like Disney Marvel. Sony, it's Sony but it's the be- it's the best Marvel movie of mm-hmm. the decade. Like Avengers: Infinity War, all that. They're great, but Spider-Man: Spider-Verse is so fucking good, and it gets everything right. And there's so many good Spider-Man characters, and the acting, and the plot. I love. Oh my god, it's so good. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many details yes, in this movie. How all the characters are different art styles. And it's almost a movie that requires multiple watches. Oh, yeah. Um, multiple viewings. All the things going on in the background. There's so much going on. Um, the art style of the movie is inspirational. Yes. Uh, um and uh, the like, there are small little details. Like there, there's one that's really popular uh, about how everybody is animated on ones. Yeah. So the animation for them looks really, really smooth. Yeah. But the animation for Miles at the beginning of the movie is animated on twos. Right. So it's a little, it's a little jankier and not as as smooth. Um, but towards the shift of the uh, end of the movie, when he shifts and he accepts his responsibility, um, he well, is then animated on one. I was just thinking about it. It's so good. It's so <laughs> um, I remember when I saw the trailer for that movie, it just like got dropped casually for some yeah. other movie and fucking blew my mind. I couldn't believe it was being made. Like, it, no one was like getting any buzz about it either. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you see this? Excuse me. You seeing this? Have you seen this trailer? Spider Man. The one Miles gonna Morales movie is coming out, and right. no one cares. It's yeah. insane. It's amazing. It was so good, and I made people go see it mm -hmm. over in England. I'm like, you guys have to go see this movie. I saw it like another four times over there when I went back. Cause, really? Because I kept getting replayed at the theater on my campus, and I went to like every single one. Well, you you didn't take enough people to go see it because it's still the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie ever made. Isn't that so sad? Yes. Yeah, Isn't it's that so upsetting? Well, that's like how Blade Runner 2049 and First Man both are very good movies. Good acting by Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean Low box office performance. That's what I mean about comparing them. It's like... Technically stunning, great acting by Ryan Gosling, low budget. Like Which one? You said First Man and Blade Runner? Yeah. 2049. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Absolutely fantastic. Spider-Verse is Getting one of my a sequel. favorite comic arcs ever, growing up as a kid. I didn't even necessarily read them, just the idea of them I've always been obsessed with. Yeah. And so I'm so glad that, one, they did it, and they did it, like, so well. And they're still going to do it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna continue mm -hmm. that that movie. Um, I definitely watched the after credit scene because got me hyped. And the first time I was definitely like, oh, watch yeah. the credits to see how many artists there are on this fucking movie. There's a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, great movie. Good choice. Beautiful movie. What's your number seven? My number seven is the Avengers. Oh, okay. Infinity War. Oh! I believe... Great movie. Yes. So good, dude. I believe where Avengers set the foundation for something, uh, the Russo brothers came in and they perfected the technique. Um, yeah. yeah. I, it was a, up between Endgame or Infinity War, and personally, in my opinion, I think Infinity War Infinity is, more is well way written. better than Endgame. It's more well-structured, and it sets up the next movie so perfectly. Endgame, you can't really... It's not as fun to rewatch so many times. Mm -hmm. Not not just because it's so long, but... It starts, not, it starts on a War, bummer. I, I watched Infinity War in French, just to fucking watch it again. Wow, uh, I month, didn't know that. A month or two ago with my friend, because she hadn't seen it. Uh -huh. When I was over in... Oh, Mars okay. State, my friend was like, she yeah. always watch this movie. <laughs> she switched it to English, because she speaks English, and she'd rather see it without the dub, but... Just for me, I was like, yeah, let's watch the first 20 minutes. With In the French. Fucking French dub so I can see fucking Thanos speaking French. Um, yeah, so good. And sets up the villain. A perfect villain. I noticed, I noticed in the French, the last time I watched it, if you really pay attention to the music, the music that should be for a hero plays when Thanos comes on. Oh, yeah. So Thanos is the hero of the movie. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, uh, so it's so well made. Yeah, he's he. he it's ultimately his movie. You yeah. want him to succeed. You want to see him get all the stones. That's why curious. some people were not the most pleased with Endgame because that Thanos wasn't the villain anymore. No, no. I don't want to spoil it. Everybody. Okay. Well, it's okay. the the, it's the biggest movie of all time. 
Everyone's the different. fact that they killed that Thanos so quick. Yeah. And then you fight like younger. It's like. It lead, it's a little bittersweet because yeah. you want to see more of him and then you don't get it. It's like. Yeah. The, if you follow Metal Gear Solid at all, it's like if you really like Solid Snake, um, but then you, you only played one game as him. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, you only play what? The, you only play the first game as Solid Snake, and the fourth one as him. I didn't even fucking. Yeah, and the dude. second one. Um, at the beginning you play as him, and then the rest of the game you play as Raiden. And then in the fourth game you play as the same character, Solid Snake, but he's not Solid Snake anymore. He's Old Snake. But it is the same character. It's the same character, okay. but he's really fucking old. Okay. <laughs> It's uh, bonk. Uh, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid movie I've directed never... by John Voight Roberts. Who's that? He directed the Kong Skull Island movie. Oh, and okay. uh, uh, the most... What about Drake Biden? No, no. He's directing Godzilla Kong 2020. I can't come up with a good director for that movie because I don't know that. But Which one? I was going to say some funny director to direct fucking Metal Gear Solid. Oh, well, that's not um, that's not a hope. That's true. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. John Boy Roberts is going to direct the Metal Gear Solid All right, when I'll it comes it. out. Me too. Well, I know you won't, but... <laughs> That's um, why I'll see it. But yeah, Infinity War, uh, really well paced for being Might almost be three hours long. Um, <laughs> and and kind of how it stated how before with Avengers, it was unheard of having a cast, a big A-star cast like that. Yeah. Um, and then with Infinity War, you're literally bringing everybody into the mix. Um, so you have to apply. And game even more. And even Endgame. including new characters, too. Um, and writing all those characters in is so difficult, but uh, uh, Infinity War does it so well. And they make the character interactions a really good part of it. And you kind of got a little bit of that in Civil War. Yeah, Civil War got pretty good at times. Uh, and it left you wanting more, and this is finally what gives it to you. Yeah. Is all those characters coming together and just having a good character-driven story. It's one of, one of the best endings of the decade. Mm-hmm. Yes, there leaving it on that amazing Empire Strikes what Back like good. ending. Ooh. Um, just I, I need to rewatch Empire and Strikes Back. Think of how... Po- how um, Influential the movie was in meme culture too. It inspired yes. so oh, many yeah. memes that are even used today. <laughs> still, they still, they'll, they'll last for yeah. a while. Yeah, and it, it's just it was so popular, um, but and yet being so popular, an actually well structured movie. Like the, Martin Scorsese needs to come sit down with us. Marty, we'll we'll come marathon on. all Watch the movies. With us. We don't even. Need- I guess so. He has. He, he the has to understand. To yeah, he has to understand thing. what's so special, and True. he does. He just he just doesn't have the time. Well, he can make the time. He has all the time in the world. Clock's running out. Clock's running out. I don't want to think about that. Listen, man, you gotta accept two things in life: your own mortality and Martin Scorsese's mortality. <laughs> yeah. Sad. And, uh, Joe Pesci was looking. I don't know if it was just the makeup no, he was, for Irishman or if he legitimately looking like uh, really the old man there. Irishman is good but long. Yeah, Irishman is good but long. Eric made the mistake about <laughs> halfway into the movie. He goes, this movie has really good pacing. And then right after he said that, the story was like, all, all right, right, let me get the breaks f- then. Yeah. Just to curse Eric. I made a mistake. You're like, wow, this movie. I was like, yeah. Um, same thing happened with Silence for me too. The first half of the movie was like so was interesting. Silence. That was the that was the movie with uh, Martin Scorsese movie with oh, Adam Driver. Yeah, and... I forgot about that movie. <laughs> it didn't even make my top one hundred eleven because I didn't see it when I was looking at all the movies that yeah, came out. Yeah, wow, that makes me worried. I feel like there's like so many good movies I keep forgetting. I was so excited for that movie. But... Yeah, I was too, but it was a bit of a letdown. Remember. Good um, acting. You know what Good movie story. I was excited for that was a letdown? What? Hail Caesar. Oh my god. That was, that was the, the biggest, biggest letdown of the decade. decade. <laughs> I was so hyped for that movie. A fucking. I don't know what happened with that. I, we need to rewatch because, like, I don't know if it was bad timing. I just don't think it was. I've seen it two or three times. I tried it again. Yeah. I went once 
Uh, and the movie broke down in the middle. So I had to wait for them to turn it back on. And, and I was like, honestly, Probably don't more even really... It's like, do I, wanna, do I really want to sit here and like wait for them to turn it on and actually finish the movie? And I did it, and I was like, oh. I should have left. <laughs> I don't know. Good. I mean, there was good acting in that, and uh, that actor that went on to play Han Solo, I really like because I saw him in Tetro. Ever mm-hmm. since then, I want, I want to support that actor. Uh, Aaron Rick or whatever his name is. He's Han Solo now. That's. I thought it was. Or is that Baby Driver? Ansel Elhort. Ansel Elhort. Elhort is Baby Driver. Yeah. Did you catch the fucking baby driver line in Knives Out? I did, yeah. <laughs> we saw Knives like, hey, Out today, which is really good. Good movie, one of the best of 2019, maybe. Um, yeah, that, that's mine. Uh, Avengers Infinity War is my number seven. So we're on my number six? Yes, you're number six. Get ready. We listened to pieces of it today. Mad Max Fury Road. Okay. Yeah. I... I was oh, being bumping oh. into this, sorry. That's the mood of the fucking movie, dude. <laughs> wow. I love Mad Max so much. Oh, yeah. it's so good. It is high adrenaline you movie throughout hyped. the entire The world thing. building, the fashion, mm-hmm. everything about the movie is so good. Great acting, great characters. Beautiful story. Beautiful camera work, beautiful. My favorite scene in that is when uh, Charlize Ther- Theron's character... Uh, fucking falls down to her knees in the sand and the sand is just blowing mm-hmm. with the fucking music in the background. Yeah. So that music is so good. The like slower music in that movie instead of the hype. I mean the hype stuff is really good for driving but some of that slower music is like very somber. Beautiful music. Mm-hmm. So good. And the first movie I ever saw at Alamo Draft House was they did a special screening of the black and white version. Oh so you so saw it in black and white? Yeah I saw it. What did oh. you think? It think? was good, but the color I think makes it stand out. Yeah. Because a lot of apo- like the whole buzz where everyone talks about like every apocalypse movie is dark, and this one changes it by being so bright, and it's like it's true. Yeah. Like the black and white is cool; it's a cool effect, but the color is a big part of the movie because it because it's like, do you want it to be like somber? It was more somber in the black and white, or do you want it to be fucking insane? And mm-hmm. the color helps boost it to the fucking max. Man. Well, yeah, because uh, he... It was originally intended to be in black and white. Right. And then it was well, later down decide. the pipeline. He was like, oh, we'll just do color. And yeah. it, it works. Like, it the was oranges such, was and the choice. blues in that movie are really good. Yeah. Um, those vast desert landscapes and mm. dune landscapes are That's really nice. Up. Yeah, it's, it's gonna come here in the next five years. <laughs> you always, you always have to bring that up, don't you? Our demise. Yeah, it's been on my mind a lot this last year. Yeah. But it didn't help being in my field of study. Mm-hmm. We have to talk about it a lot of time. Or being in that same school with a lot of other conservation students, especially. But it's mostly because we did a whole class on the Anthropocene, and so it's like always on my mind. Yeah. But We'll see how bad it gets soon. We'll see. I don't know my worries about coming home to Arizona because it's like, I don't know how much longer this part of the country will be legitimately habitable. Because we already, like, low key have the water wars going on mm-hmm. between the Colorado River states mm-hmm. and California taking our water. But that's, that's a different podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, our uh, uh, Eric and Laszlo talk politics. It's not even. Well, I guess it is the politics. It is yeah. literally just the politics of who, who gets, gets to get water, water from the Colorado River yeah. that goes through Arizona. I Should guess. Make a Does it go into it. California? The Colorado River? Yeah. I don't think so. Mm, and they really don't deserve a lot. They may have gotten a pipeline to go down there. Yeah, I know. It's it's a whole thing. Arizona is exclusively, even though. Colorado River isn't exclusively in it, but I was like, you know what, Arizona, we can get all the water. Mm-hmm. Colorado, fuck off. Yeah. Just, Arizona If you want it, stop Colorado it before River it goes down water. the mountain or something. This should Might as well just call it the Arizona River. In fact, let's start a petition. Excuse me, Arizona River, Colorado River, fuck <laughs> off. Nevada, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to, that other side of the Colorado River in Nevada, that's Arizona now. Just like I'm going to, I have a petition to occupy southeastern California. 
So the entire U.S. range of Sora cacti is exclusively in Arizona borders? Yeah. I'm going to enact that. By 2023, Arizona is going to start growing. We'll start our own Mad Max. Arizona can succeed. <laughs> the, the independent state of Arizona. Um, I'm joining with Sonora. Sonora can leave Mexico. We can leave the U.S. and become a fucking big-ass state of Sonora. So Mad Max is your number six. Yes. Okay. So good. Great movie. Um... Yeah, fantastic. It's fun to drive, but be safe. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, don't go too fast when you're blasting that music. Right around the time that movie came out. Oh, I fucking shaved my head because of that movie. Really? Oh, That's why you shaved your head? Yeah, dude, to be fucking a war boy, dude. I shaved my head bald. I shaved my beard off. And that was around the time that my Mercury Cougar was having those issues, and I could it wouldn't start. And so you do, started with the... a fucking... I can't remember what fucking piece of the car it is, but you would turn it. It was like the time belt or something. You'd have to put like a fucking wrench in and like turn it and then it would start again. And I was like, yo, I'm out here fucking Mad Max. <laughs> uh, the first time I fucking understand even one component of the car. So every time my car fucking couldn't work, I'm like, oh, don't worry. Oh, it's get the time belt. I'd fucking <laughs> do it with my own wrench and you would get like fucking oil. It would be like hot, like burn your hand and like get oil on you. I'm like, yo, pump that music up. I'm about to hit the fucking. Great. I want to get, once again, it's one of the best trailers. Yeah. That movie, that trailer fucking hypes you up. Absolutely. And that music, that opera music that plays in it, used to be in a fucking GameCube game for Quidditch. <laughs> and that song always stuck with me, so when I heard it, it was like a weird nostalgia thing, even though there's literally nothing to do with Harry Potter or anything. It's just like, I don't remember that. Right. I remember fucking Christmas morning, first game I ever played on a fucking GameCube with my brother was that Quidditch World Cup. Mm-hmm. Good little game. Good classic little game. You we game. recommend you go down and after you're done watching Mad Max Fury Road, go and play Quidditch World Cup Quidditch from World the GameCube. Cup on the GameCube. Just because it has the same music. Yeah. Well, good choice Japan on your, on your number six. Um, is there your one? number six. My number six of the decade. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Ooh. Yes, very good. Uh, directed by Edgar Wright. And uh, just came out at a good time in my life. Exactly, was, it was perfectly timed for people of our age. Yeah, we just after high school. Yeah, it was just it was literally, I think the fall of twenty ten. Yeah. So. Fall of twenty ten or twenty eleven. Twenty ten. So we were still in high school. No, no, we graduated May twenty ten. Oh yes, you're right. So okay. it was like fall first semester of community college for some of us. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, so like we had just started community college, out of high school, we just had that fucking summer. Well, did it come out in fall or summer? I think fall. Okay. Yeah, I remember it being around that semester's time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, just the best video really well game movie, um, probably still. Probably still the best video game movie. Uh, and not even a really a video game movie, just a video game that, ha- or a movie that happens to be inspired by video games. Um, inspired by Great a Great example book. of editing. Yes, editing and special effects in that movie are fantastic. You have Chris Evans playing another superhero. And the physical acting, the physical acting, the physical editing. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, the physical comedy. In that's, that what, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Well, the physical comedy, comedy in that movie is really good. Movie. Um, there's a whole video on Edgar Wright physical comedy, or not Edgar Wright specifically, just physical comedy. No, it is. It's is it specifically his movies. Okay. Because okay. it's all the fucking Sean Penn movies, the Cornetto trilogy type movies, and Scott Pilgrim. Okay. So yeah. Every frame of painting. Right. Say Sean Penn. I mean Simon Pegg. <laughs> 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 I, I, I get those names mixed up all the time. I'll see Simon Pegg and be like, yo, that's Sean that's Penn. That's Sean Penn. They look alike. They don't. They <laughs> just have, I guess, similar names in my mind. Yeah. Uh, Edgar Wright is a SB. master of comedic timing and physical comedy. Um, and Great. he takes all those techniques and he puts them into Baby Driver. <laughs> Baby Driver. He, Hell yeah. Like... It's that, not on my list, but it's a great one. Yeah, it's not on my list either, just because I personally like Scott Pilgrim more, just because 
uh, in my opinion, it hits closer to home for me. It relates more. The World's to me. End was in my top thirty or so for a bit. World's yeah. End is also fantastic. Love that movie. Again, came out good time. Have you ever seen Hot Fuzz? Uh, uh, it came out. I saw it when I was too young. We then you got to like we need to rewatch it, it now because really good. they're all really good. Every single one of the Edgar Wright yeah. movies are really good. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, a classic. Um, the zombie it, one's not my favorite. I'm just gonna say. The zombie one, Shaun of the Dead, not a fan. It's a lot. It's of a good movie, movie, but it's not my favorite. And Same. it's one of those things where some people are like super into it, and I'm like, oh, okay, buddy. Hot like fuzz even in England, well, maybe especially in England, there are some people still dressed up like that character in my last Halloween party this oh, year. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> this movie from do that. Well, it's also such an easy outfit to do for someone yeah, doing lazy is. Halloween stuff. Just yeah. Fucking put a tie on her head and get like your shirt part. done. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's that's my number six, Scott Pilgrim. What is your number five? My number five. We're getting there now. Is the big stuff because we are in the top five of the decade. Number five is Ex Machina, twenty fifteen. Wow. Beautiful okay. film. Okay. I love that movie so much. So good writing. Yeah. Good design. Great acting. Oscar Isaac in that movie is one of my favorite characters of all time. Mm-hmm. Something I think because it it flips on the head because he's the fucking engineer. The well, he's an engineer, but more than that, he's like almost like an Elon Musk type character. Right, so the one designing the robot. But instead of him being such a fucking like old like nerdy guy, mm-hmm. he's fucking ripped. He's fucking cool. He's fucking he's a chill. Chad, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, I hadn't seen something like that. I was like, damn, this is such a cool... He's part of the reason why I shaved my head probably, too. <laughs> so those both movies, movies came out both in 2015. And I'm like, yo, bald with, like, a beard is a fucking cool look. Especially Thanks. when you're ripped. <laughs> Especially. No, um, that movie is great. And uh, that was one of the movies, again, that reintroduced me or continued my interest in... Uh, that actor that I now need to remember the name of. He's Hux now. Domhnall Gleeson. Domhnall Gleeson, one of the best actors of the decade. Absolutely. He's had a lot of good movies this decade. Uh, Ex Machina, he's been in the Star Wars movies. Uh, Peter Rabbit. <laughs> if you took Peter Rabbit out of Peter Rabbit, they're just romance movies between the two <laughs> human characters, and Peter Rabbit is a good romance story. It's so weird, because when we watched it, it was like, just... Uh, him and whoever the girl was. Was it Emily Blunt? It might have been. Uh, that movie, if they just had a normal human romance movie, it would have been perfect. And then Peter Rabbit literally ruins their movie together. It's and like, their relationship. It was the worst. It's the fucking worst. And they're making a sequel. If Donald Gleason's back, I'll see it. <laughs> oh, Donald Gleason works at Harrods. I finally uh, went to Harrods in, during Christmas for London. Uh-huh. He works there? Or, worked. or his character worked at Harrods oh, in, the, in movie. the movie. Okay, I was like, what? And I you like just made someone? the connection. <laughs> yeah, he's back. He works at a fucking <laughs> giant holiday department store. Well, it's not always holidays, but there's a huge Harrods in London. That's like an entire like block, like mall size, mm-hmm. is one department store. Just Harrods. Damn, dude. that's crazy. I went there during Christmas and I was a little let down by their. Uh, the outside is great because it's super lit up but inside I was like ready for like I don't know some fucking 90's Christmas movie style mm-hmm. fucking extravagantly decorated um what story did I go Fortnum and Mason in London that was the fucking place to walk around at Christmas that yeah. place is lit I don't know why but something I did for Christmas in London is I just walked around and went to all the giant like big name department stores because I knew that they would be like top notch, like fucking over decorated and Fort of a Mason one. So I went to Liberty, I went to Harrods, I went to Hamley's toy store, which is a fucking six story toy store. Yeah. And then fucking Fort of a Mason is a six story tea and like menswear and jewelry store. Jeez. It's Seems that one cool. was fucking amazing. Uh anything else to say about Ex Machina? Uh beautiful existential film, beautiful writing, great plot twist. Mm-hmm. I I gotta admit I don't remember the movie too well. Um, Good music too. The thing I remember the most is Oscar Isaac's dance scene. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is one of the best scenes in the movie. Well, yeah, it is. It's definitely one of the best Hands down, one of the greatest really. scenes in the movie. Um, yeah, great, but a good choice. I remember seeing that. I'm pretty sure the line is that he couldn't, is that Donald Gleason confronts Oscar Isaac like you tore her apart. He just goes, I'm gonna tear up this dance floor, dude. And he fucking (laughs) just completely dismisses uh, what he said. Good, good little movie about existentialism and humanity when fucking Donald Gleason starts to think that he might be a robot too. Mm hmm. Gleason. Um,. Who's the actress that played uh, the robot? Alicia Vikander. Oh, nice. Well, she also plays Laura Croft. Wow. In the Tomb Raider movie. Wow. Yeah. I get her mixed up with Anna de Armas, but they don't look alike at all. Hmm. Anna de Armas is a really, really good. Yeah. What else is she in? Uh, she's in Blade Runner. Is she? She's uh, Ryan Gosling, Kay's girlfriend. The the hologram girlfriend oh, that's okay. Anna de Armas, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. She's great in that movie. Yeah. Um, so that was your number... Number five. five. So now we're moving into your My top, five. top five. Here we go. My number five is Spider-Man. Into the Spider-Man. Yeah. Place. It's really good. What can I say? Oh, uh, man. Absolutely inspiring. I remember just kind of... Parker. Sitting there for the hour and a half, two hours, just being stunned that I actually got to witness this movie on screen uh, and actually see the, the fantastic uh, level of artistry that was brought to something so mainstream. Like, that's a huge risk. And the fact that it's getting a sequel, amazing. Like, absolutely amazing. Oh, spoiler, but I think the sequel's going to have a lot more of Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Which I'll, I'm so ready for. Yeah, oh, my absolutely. God. Yeah, that sure guy is my favorite Spider-Man character. <laughs> I, like, never even saw his show. I just got that action figure once as a kid. <laughs> Boom, hands down. down. It's my favorite Spider-Man design ever. The concept of him being from the future. I love that character so much. And the fact that it gets to be Oscar Isaac, of all people, is going to do great. Who's, I'm just who's your favorite character in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Peter B. Parker. Peter B. Parker? I fucking love Peter B. Parker. Yeah. He's a great character. I love... I really like the main prime Peter Parker. The one that's supposed to be the perfect Spider-Man. Yeah. That yeah. Dies in Stark. Yeah. Uh, I really like... Just, just his couple scenes alone were, like, perfect. Mm-hmm. The way that he's, like, a... Super experienced, the most mature. God, every Spider-Man in that movie is so good, but especially the two Peter Parkers are so good in that movie. They're yeah. everything that Peter Parker should be mm-hmm. in that at that age range. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm so glad that Tom Holland is still in it, and my dream is for <laughs> Avengers movies to somehow stay relevant in the coming decades. So that we can eventually get to a Peter Parker that that's, that is that, that's that, that age, old and it's still played like, by Tom want, Holland. Oh, that'd be so cool. Can you imagine having that kind of career? Because I want that Tom Holland type Peter Parker to grow into being the Iron Man role for another generation of Avengers movies later. To literally see the fucking the arc of like little Peter Parker growing up to being the front line mature one. Mm-hmm. That'd be so fucking cool. I don't know if we're going to get it, because I can already feel, I don't know if Avengers-type movies can stay relevant, because of the oversaturation, I think people are starting to get a little tired of it. But if they're able to pull it off, that's the one thing I'm hoping for, is for Spider-Man to just keep growing more and more into the front. And I mean, that's literally what Spider-Man Homecoming was all about. Yep. So. You mean Far From Home? Far From Home. Yeah. yeah. The second one. That was a good movie. Also a good movie, yes. Oh, Not the best one. 2018? 19, I think. 90? 2019. It's in my, in my Facebook post. I put it in my top 10 of 2019. Okay. Yeah, uh, but Into the Spider-Verse, fantastic. Um, we got another one in a couple of years, so. <sighs> uh, the, those are the kind of movies that make you hope you stay alive for a while. <laughs> yeah. There are some movies where it's like, it's I can like, miss I, just, that. I need to stay alive long enough to see the end of this. I felt like that for the first uh, Force Awakens, and then after <laughs> the Last Jedi, I was like, all right, I can die. Rise of Skywalker was good, but he doesn't. He slept through most of it, so he doesn't. I gotta to rewatch say. it. I 
really like Rise of Skywalker, honestly. That's a, that could be a tough All right. pull-up. So What's your number four? My number four. four. You're going to like this one. Brigsby Bear. Brigsby Bear. Brigsby Bear. Kyle Mooney. Uh, we've been fans of Kyle Mooney on YouTube for a long time. years. And to see him grow to where he is, both on SNL and now making a movie, that fucking good for his first movie, I think, is his first movie. I think so. Um, Feature film, at least. Insane. Amazing. It's so good. And Mark Hamill's in it, and he does <laughs> so good for his role. Let's rewatch it. Oh, yeah. I, I have it. I own it on DVD. I love Briggs v. Bear. Everything about that movie is so good. It's... I don't even want to explain it. Just go fucking Just watch go it. watch Briggs v. Bear. It's great. And it has a lot of 80s nostalgia type stuff. 80s, 90s. So, if you're into that, it'll, it'll hit you, too. Great music. Great camera work. The story's okay. I'm not gonna... It's not the best... It's just slow at times, but it comedy, has a really good so good. Oh yeah, exactly. And the side characters in that movie are very wholesome, very likable. His best friend that he makes the movie with, mm -hmm. dude, I love that character. Yeah, he's literally a perfect person. Well, I don't know about perfect, but you know what I mean. Just like the dude in Brooklyn, he's a, the most perfect like romantic interest I've seen in the decade. Um. Yeah, Briggsby Bear. Great movie. I really want that Briggsby Bear shirt. Mm -hmm. The only time I went to a film club, there was a film club at University of Kent, and the only time I went was because they were screening Briggsby Bear. It was the first movie they screened at the start of their year, and I was like, yeah. What do they think? People loved it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know if everyone liked it, but it was one of those things where I sat next to complete strangers, and they turned and like asked me, I'm like, oh, this is like my third time seeing this movie. I fucking love this movie. So mm -hmm. We had a good conversation about it. Nice. And they're like, oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, yeah I came just for Briggs. I knew what I was getting myself in. <laughs> Kyle Mooney's great. Look up Kyle Mooney's old YouTube videos, especially. Good neighbor. Yeah, good neighbor. Good Glad choice. he's successful. Good, good choice. I feel like he's a good influence on mainstream comedy now in the position that he's in. Or hopefully will be. My... Yeah, we're on your number four now. My number four uh, is Whiplash. You remember that one? Oh, yeah. With Miles Teller. I still play his music sometimes. It's so good. That movie good. is so good. That movie. I've only seen it once in theaters at one time, so I feel like had I seen it more, it'd probably be in this list. So that movie, um, we, we just saw Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler recently, and you were we were saying how stressful the movie is. Yeah. And I was trying to think of another movie that made me feel that way, and Whiplash came to mind. And I remembered how much I loved that movie, and it the 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 story of wanting more and wanting to constantly strive to be the best over doing it for fun uh, is kind of really uh, essential in that movie. Um, yeah. And drives a big message home, but it also has one of the greatest finales in a movie yeah, ever. ever. It Dude. is such a good payoff, uh, and all that stress gets relieved so quickly and so um, with, with with such a great uh, way of doing it. I, I don't want to spoil it. Um, J.K. Simmons in the movie is so good. Watch it even just for his Just for his acting himself. I, it's a movie I really want my dad to watch. If you really like music, you'll love this movie. If you really like... Jazz, uh, especially. Jazz, yeah, if you love jazz, you'll really like it. Um, if you're a fan of acting... Uh, I can even hear the music in my... Because I've listened to it a lot even in England. Yeah. I just have it in my like, jazz playlist. It's really, my really good. I it recommend gets you it. Going. Caravan especially is such that a good That was one of my favorite song. movies of 2000. 13, 14, whatever. I think it's 13, yeah. Whenever it came out. I think 2013, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, Miles Teller before he was huge. Uh, right? Before he was... Uh, he was so, that's the thing. is like I wish that... Before it was Mr. Fantastic. Fantastic Four was good just so Miles Teller could get more work. But yep. I'm afraid it might have hurt him. Yeah, absolutely. I'm worried. I haven't seen him in a while. I'm going to look him up. Look him up. Well, I start my... You start your next... Number... Number three. Top threes. Um, number three. Oh, boy. This is one of the best movies of all time, if not one of the best movies of the decade. Or both, I mean. It is Blade Runner 2049. 
as some of you know, Blade Runner 1982, the original Blade Runner, is my number one movie of all time. And Blade Runner 2049 Delivered is so good. It's such a good sequel, but more importantly, it's a good standalone film. Like, you honestly don't need to have seen Blade Runner, uh -huh. the original, to see this movie. They're pretty different. Mm -hmm. um, but that's fine. I didn't need it to be the exact same because we already had Blade Runner. Right. This movie takes place, what, like 30 years later? So it makes sense that it's very stylistically different. A whole new culture, a whole new era of cyberpunk that's different than the 30 years older. Every, all the architecture and fashion, everything has changed, mm -hmm. which is what I was looking for. And the music in this movie is just as good as the old music. And then I really like Ryan Gosling, and so I'm glad that he got to have such a fucking cool role. And uh, what, what's the name of uh, the guy that plays Drax? Eddie Bautista. Is it Eddie Bautista? No. I thought it was Dave Bautista. Yes, Dave, Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista. His, he doesn't have a big role in the movie, but his character uh, is impactful. Yeah. Even with his limited screen time. It's such a, he's a classic character immediately. Um, and Dave uh, Armis in the movie? Come on. I... A lot well, of big themes in that movie. I, I haven't seen it since it first came out. I would definitely have to rewatch it. We should rewatch it. It's so good. You let's come watch up, it. Let's, come up let's with watch it. With the volume up, up. for fucking <laughs> for wall, yeah. <laughs> Blade Runner it, soundtrack. Is if not for these movies that are my two and one, yeah, this would have been my number one. But okay, these two movies also exist in the same decade, and so they are. Just Who directed Blade Runner twenty forty nine? Some. His name, Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he did Sicario is too. doing Dune. Yep. So I can't wait to see what he does with that, since we'll never get Jodorowsky's... Oh my god. How could you I forgot Jodorowsky's forget. didn't even exist. That's the best documentary of, 20, <laughs> of the 2010s. That's the best documentary of the decade. I literally forgot about it until now. <laughs> wow. Holy shit. <laughs> that's like, a good one. It's a thing you don't think about a lot, and every time I remember it, I'm like, oh, that's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Go watch Jodorowsky's Dune. We'll come up with a revised list in about a week. Just hold on, guys. Look, look, look. <laughs> I'll, I'll fucking take a... Don't worry, he'll get far and foot. Put him in the fucking top ten. Jodorowsky's Dune is coming in there. Brooklyn will come in there. Rogue One Let's is... Let's rewatch Rogue Brooklyn. One is already in... Yes. Rogue One is already in my honorable mentions because it's my favorite Star Wars movie of mm -hmm. this decade. era. Yeah. This decade. Best Star Wars movie of the decade is Rogue One, in my opinion. Yeah. Um... Blade Runner is one of the best movies I've ever Thank you. I was ever. like, what movie were we talking about? Blade Runner. Yeah, I definitely need to rewatch it myself. So, can't add too much. If you think that the original Deckard in 1982 Blade Runner is an android, a replicant, since they changed the word, you're a McDummy and you're wrong. <laughs> Even if Ridley Scott says and thinks that Harrison Ford's character Deckard is a robot he's wrong he's wrong the point well the argument of whether or not he's a robot is actually to, the point is that it doesn't matter is that they're both human mm -hmm. in their own way mm -hmm. so it really doesn't matter if he's a robot or not also the book that it's based on uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep is my favorite book of all time and so <laughs> very personally connected to this theme the theme of the android questioning its own existence and getting the existentialism of artificial being is very close to me. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite theme. You put a sad robot in fucking anything, it's good. That's why, um, was it Civil War when uh, Vision was invented? Mm -hmm. That no. scene? Oh, wait. Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. That scene when he's looking in the fucking reflection. At himself. That, that's the best scene in the entire movie. <laughs> it's like, oh. And the rest of it is okay. I like Vision a lot in that movie, and he kind of got lamer as time went. Yeah. But, but only, I think only Josh Whedon could write for him. He's sad um, robot. He's sad robot, Once I'm down. I was born yesterday. Sad robot also needs to do And you have, you have... Uh, what? Age, in Age of Ultron, you have... <laughs> <laughs> you have it's not even in either of our lists. You have this brand new, naive, yet optimistic for humanity robot... 
And then you have this one that's gone through the shit and yeah. seen it all. He has actually. He's also still brand new and it's has just that the he's just what he's seen. been funneling through his yeah. And he's like these people don't deserve to live. And it's like yes, they do because they do all those things. They deserve it. Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Go see it. <laughs> go see it. Put the volume uh, up. Joy's love is real. The end. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> All right. A lot of people say it isn't, and you can actually argue a lot. There's a lot of subjects in the movie that could suggest that her love is not real. But is it? Is it my number? You're three? number three. All right. My number three. Little old movie I like to call, and other people like to call it too, because that's its name. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom. Ooh. I absolutely adore this That's movie. A great movie. It kind of falls under that thing uh, that you were talking about with Paddington and the wholesomeness level. I think yeah. Wes Anderson has definitely uh, touched on that. Yes. Um, ever since Royal Tenenbaums. And That's my favorite. Well, it's always a toss up between Darjeeling Limited and Royal Tenenbaums, which mm-hmm. my favorite Wes Anderson movie is. Yeah. And um, with Moonrise Kingdom, I think he just captures that innocence of childhood just so well. Uh, and it's just a delightful movie. The soundtrack is amazing. Yeah. Um, and all of the acting is amazing. It's hard to do uh, child actors. Yeah. And t- a lot of people get tired of them. But the, the child actors in these movies, at least the main cast, the main two, um, are really, really good. Makes me think of Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. For example, very good child actors. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, Moonrise Kingdom, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Beautifully shot. Oh, yeah. Um, important. A, yeah. It's probably one of the last. I think that movie is actually what shot Wes Anderson to a house. Yeah, that was, that was his rise to more And then being Grand Budapest solidified it. And then Isle of Dogs came out. Uh, I like Isle of Dogs. I like Isle of Dogs too, but it's no Grand Budapest, no Moonrise Kingdom. It's no Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is my favorite Wes Anderson movie, if you wanted to know. Mine is Darjeeling Limited. It's the first Wes Anderson movie, and I saw it. I was probably like a little too young, so I didn't understand the movie fully, but parts of it really stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And then rewatching it as an, a, an actual adult, I'm like, oh yeah, this is still my favorite Wes Anderson movie. It's so good. Um, Who only attracted fucking anthropology religion? What is your number two? My number two may surprise you, but probably not. The artist. The artist. I was wondering if you had forgotten that movie because you hadn't talked about it since I asked you. Yeah, forget it. The artist is fantastic. It's one of the best movies, hands down, of the decade. Mm -hmm. Not even just my personal favorite, just one of the best movies of the decade. Yeah, absolutely. Fucking everything about the movie. I remember I wrote a fucking 11 page essay about how good that movie was, and then the teacher fucking brought it out to share it with class, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude. No, that was probably the best, that was the best time of my existence in film school. It was like seeing that and being able to write an essay about fucking the artist. Uh, and then I'm still sad to this day that Jean Dujardin returned to French cinema. Hasn't really come back to American cinema at all. I looked in like Monuments Men. <laughs> Oops. What? Uh you know the the star of that movie. Um Uggy. Oh the dog. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead, huh? Yeah, he's I dead. He died a, a year or two ago. He died in two thousand fifteen. Damn, okay, he's been dead for a bit. That's alright. <laughs> <laughs> He's been alive since the 1920s. What about the other? What about the main lead, the lead in that role? Who Jean Dujardin? Yeah, so I, just said, too. I just said he's returned to French cinema. He has not uh, been in American movies in a while, from what I've seen. He was in Wolf of Wall Street for a bit. Yeah, for a little tiny bit, he, he was in Wolf of Wall Street. Swiss dude, I believe. He did those OSS movies to save up. Um, he was in a movie called Up for Love. Yeah, it honestly looks like he's back to doing like French kind of. Mainstream French cinema. Yep. Like French rom com type stuff. That's what it looks like. That's sad. It just that was just one good role that he was just perfect for. So good. Every actor in that movie did good. Absolutely. Really good writing. 
what you <laughs> you need in a sound. And I, I wrote this in my essay, too, that the movie was perfect, except for one fatal flaw. They used this really annoying rendition of the song Pennies from Heaven. Oh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, I forgot. But now it's a classic. You gotta listen to it. Um... <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. And I remember that was the only flaw of the movie that I wrote about in my yeah. critique. Oh my God. I haven't seen that movie in so long, but... <laughs> and it comes out of nowhere. It's, I think, during a montage. Yeah, when, it's uh, of the, her getting more Love roles. Interest is getting bigger roles. Yeah. yeah. Let's just rewatch watch a bunch movie. of movies. Great, like, that's what we're gonna do. This. Like, we're gonna, oh, remember this movie? Ooh, we gotta watch that shit. I like rewatching just random, not random, but like scenes from movies that yeah. really get to me. And I, like, I I did a scene in my sound editing class back in like 2012 or 2014, probably. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used uh, that scene when he suddenly can hear sound. Yeah. And the ultra realism of n- just actual sound effects. For the first time, great scene. It was an amazing scene. It's a, it a dream sequence. Gotta rewatch. We, we gotta rewatch that scene right after this fucking podcast is over. Um, okay, that's your number. That's two. my number two. So here's your number two. We're getting up there. How long is this episode so far? Here we go. I don't know. It better be recording. I it, swear it to is, God, I'll it lose is. my damn mind. <laughs> it's recording. Don't worry. My number two is. Toy Story 3. Ooh. I absolutely adore that movie. Again, this is another thing where it's very personal to me, and it came out at the perfect time. Just graduated high school. It was the summer of that uh, graduation or year. And it came out, and I, I watched the movie, and I looked back, and I sat in my room just by myself. And it kind of was like... <laughs> Not a kid anymore, huh? <laughs> it um, it helped me. It helped my my thrust into adulthood, and um, it was a good goodbye to all of those characters. A perfectly written yeah. uh, ending for for a franchise. And then they made another. And one. then they made another one, and they ruined it, and I was upset. Toy Story Four wasn't that bad. It's not that bad. It's just that you literally had a perfect ending, and you muddied it. So. Mm, Trilogy is a trilogy. Trilogy is a trilogy. trilogy. Watch them fucking drop Toy Story 5. Buzz Lightyear's smart again. Smart again. I can easily... Yeah, that's the one... They really dumbed down Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story 4. I don't know what the fuck. They're like... Uh, They're like, uh, Buzz is dumb, right? We don't need this character. (laughs) So I can totally see them now that Woody's gone. They're gonna do a Buzz Lightyear movie. I'll call that now. I definitely could. What if they did, like, a spinoff? Sorry, a spinoff. They already had that. They already had a Buzz Lightyear They're gonna do another one, I'm telling you. Then they can do, they can put money into doing a whole rehaul of the Buzz Lightyear fucking ride oh, God. in uh, Disneyland uh, Tomorrowland. They can revamp no, that all. No, it's so all. good how it is right now, though. Um, sorry, there. I just gave Disney an idea, and they can't slow down um, their novel. Yeah, uh, fa- fantastic movie. Uh, a lot of detail in the animation. Um, one of Pixar's best. Uh, like nothing else yeah. I could say about that. Uh, who hasn't seen Toy Story three? If you haven't seen it, go see one, two, and three. They're I've all fantastic films. You've never seen one. Well, yeah, I've seen it maybe twice. Yeah, I saw um, them in theaters. And it's one of those movies that I can just sit down and watch anytime it's on. Oh, I've I mean, not it doesn't, seen it it doesn't happen it to be on all the time anywhere. But uh, yeah, great, great film. That and mean, Randy Newman. Randy Newman <laughs> recently made music to a movie you said is apparently pretty Marriage good. Story. He I did was, the music for Marriage Story, and it's really good. Tugs at your heartstrings at the right moments. Randy Newman just knows how to write good music. Um, just don't let him sing. Just don't let him sing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is your poop Are you guys number ready one? for this? You probably already know it. I probably do. Because I haven't talked about it yet. Uh, number one movie, best movie of the decade for me. I want you to say it and see if you're right. Is it her? It's her. Her. Twenty thirteen. Her. Twenty thirteen. That movie's so good. I think it really, really super introduced me to Joaquin Phoenix. Is now I think probably my favorite actor. No, I think Ryan Gosling is still my favorite actor because mm-hmm. of Blade Runner. Yeah. Okay, what else is it? I've, I've seen a lot of good Ryan Gosling movies, but anyway. <laughs> It's not, isn't it? This ain't about Ryan Gosling. This is about Joaquin Phoenix 
Scarlett Johansson does an amazing voice acting role. Yeah. Uh, Chris Pratt is a really good wholesome very character small, in that movie. A small movie. role, but great. Um, Kristen Wiig has a very small role. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing, is it's like that one scene, because I'm always like, oh, yeah. Her is my favorite movie. You guys gotta watch it. And that's how the scene, like, that's how the movie opens. And I'm like, just get through this part of the movie. And the rest of the movie is really good <laughs> and deep. But I mean, I think that's part. That's the point. Too, yeah. Of the silliness of it. Yeah. <laughs> By fucking Spike Jones, who before that was known for, uh, he made all of the, um, what's the, the Daredevil type. Jackass. Jackass. He, Jackass. he did all Jackass. He wasn't on it. He directed it. Right. He did all all Jackass. It was fucking Spike Jones, and he comes out with fucking. Her. He did a lot of uh, music videos yeah. too. Like he did Sabotage for Beastie Boys. Oh nice. Um, and he did uh, Where the Wild Things Are. Arcade Fire, the film score in Her, is some of the best music I've ever heard. And their normal music is not like that, and nope. you're really mad. <laughs> it's like one time they got it right. They made like the best music <laughs> they'll ever make, and then they're like normal music. Sorry, okay, fires. It's not bad, but it's like you guys did the score to her. That's like some of the best. Just stick to fucking introspective, sad electronic music. Mm-hmm. You don't need no pop. Get that out of here. And Scarlett Johansson. That's, that's what a great, great role for her too. Yeah, amazing role. Just her voice alone is yep. perfect. Mm-hmm. It, that's. The way to know your She's true had a actor. lot of fantastic roles this this decade. Oh yeah, Scarlett Johansson is a decade. She's of one of the best, kids. one of the biggest uh, female movie stars out there. Mm-hmm. So. She's about to fucking slam dunk twenty twenty as well. Yeah, she's starting her decade right. She's really strong with her own movie. Oh, and she's in Jojo Rabbit too, and she was great in that movie. Mm-hmm. Damn, she's in oh, Marriage she's... Story too. Oh, <laughs> no, she's not. Yeah, slowing she's, down. she's she's going... not slowing down at all, dude. Imagine, like, she's old. Imagine her being the... She's going to be the Meryl Streep of, like, our age. Or Judy age. Dench. Well, I guess Meryl Streep and Meryl Streep is much better than Judy Dench. And Judy Dench. What? You don't want to see <laughs> Scarlett Johansson in the newest version of Cats? No, I'd rather see Scarlett Johansson turn into Meryl Streep. Okay. Of where she just consistently gets better and keeps having good roles. Yeah, I would like to see that as well. I love Scarlett Johansson. Same. She's a great actress. Um, her, fantastic. Uh, I remember oh seeing God. it in theaters with you, and I remember you asked me what I thought about it, and I was like, I need to be alone with my thoughts for a while. I'm really glad we got John to see that movie. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I stuck with him. It based did. Based on what he said the other day. Oh, what did he tell you? I think he just brought it up when we were talking about movies. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's really good. Oh, you were asleep in the car last night on the drive home. Oh, okay. Because I accidentally, he asked me if her was one of my favorite movies, and I'm like, it's my top one, it's like my number one. And then I looked back, and luckily you were asleep. Asleep. <laughs> um, I, I love her. Everything about that movie is so good. Yeah. I. Oh, it's beautiful. You, you cry. A lot. I'll, I'll cry like just the opening because I know it's coming in the movie. <laughs> and uh, I don't know that that look too, and the very subtle world building of the mm-hmm. near future. Amy Adams. We cannot um, leave without. <laughs> We can't leave without talking about Amy Adams. Yeah. Again, one of the best actresses of Absolutely. the 2010s. Absolutely. Arrival um, almost made it in his top 10. I, I love Arrival, Arrival so much. Yeah. As a like, cultural anthropologist, and I'm, I grew up obsessed with aliens, and Arrival is like such the, the exact perfect kind of alien movie I've liked. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. But this is about her. And Amy Adams' character in that movie, in her, is also a perfect character. It's an amazing character. A lot of those, they're so simple and real and very real in a world that is not anymore. Because that's the thing. Is it such a deep, like, sad... Not always sad, but, like, it's such a deep movie, but then the characters themselves have really quick, candid comedy and, like, silliness. And it's like... And Joaquin Phoenix? Joaquin Phoenix. Um, Amy Adams. Chris Pratt. Karen O. Karen O. She the moon music. song. Good song. Good song. Um... Yeah, this weird mix of, like, really good, funny, like, simple comedy, and then the fucking story and yeah implications, the existential implications of it. And, uh, oh, I was talking about the world building. Uh, if you look out in the, um, since they all live in the skyscrapers, mm-hmm. and you see the city line, 
the city line is a mix of, I believe, Shanghai and Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So that it's a continuous, there are no uh, empty spots. It's continuous skyscrapers. They just put it over, so you, you do not see any, it's just all, like, over-urban. So that's, like, in his mind, that's where the future is going to. Mm -hmm. And a very subtle fashion differences. The high pants, the, the collarless colors. shirt. The color, the color palette. The use of color in that movie is amazing too. Yeah. Every, everything in that movie is the, is my favorite movie of the decade. It's yeah. Just countless everything. Would you say it's one of your favorites of all time? Yes. Easily. Yeah, because yeah. that's the thing is it's like Blade Runner nineteen eighty two is my favorite movie of all time just because I like saying it and also it just a class it's like a defining film for sci fi. Her is my number two movie of all time. It usually goes around. My top three is always in, in different orders. Blade Runner, the original, Her, and The Artist are like mm -hmm. my three favorite movies of all time. Mm -hmm. And then all these other movies are usually like mixed in. Like Mad Max sometimes is like number five of all time. Yeah. Under the Skin is usually in there. I really wanted to put A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. But even though it's such a good movie, it just couldn't... There's okay. so many good movies over the entire decades. Worth. Yeah. Good choices. Mm -hmm. Very good choices. I, I knew her would be on there somewhere. And yeah. I figured it would be your one, number one. It is my number one. Um, any guesses as to what my number one is? Is it her? No. Okay. It's not her. You already said Wolf of Wall Street. Yep. Because I was, I was thinking that's what it was since you said it the other day on Instagram. Um, I have no idea. My but when you say it, I'll probably know. But. My number one favorite movie of the decade. And it took a long time to think about this. Number one favorite movie of the decade was Rango. Rango. I love that fucking movie <laughs> yeah. so much. So entertaining. It's um, the effects studios, Industrial Light and Magic. It's their first and only animated movie, and it looks so. Good. There's so much detail in the movie. It's basically a love letter to the Southwest and to movies in general. They pay homage to countless. Uh, I need to rewatch that one. It is so good, and it's a, a good western and a good for me relatable story about finding who you are. And um, no, no movie has touched me like that in a long time. And God damn it, I really want a sequel to it so bad. It doesn't need one. Who but, made it? Um, uh, Gore Verbinski. So it, it's um, after he did like the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I think the second and third one too. It's DreamWorks, right? Not Disney? No, it's not DreamWorks and it's, it's not Disney. It's, um, wow. it's technically a Nickelodeon movie. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, technically, Damn, technically, I didn't know that. holy shit. Mm hmm Yeah. Really good. That makes uh, me like it even more. Yeah, and I was hoping because it was a Nickelodeon movie, we'd get like a spinoff on a TV show. Oh, but no, it didn't. So SpongeBob yeah. is the best TV show of the decade of the two thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The be uh, all time of our generation is the best childhood show. Oh, absolutely. I love SpongeBob so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, it just made me think of that because Nickelodeon. I grew up watching Nickelodeon a lot more than any of the other channels in I, terms of like kids shows. It was, I switched. It was Travel Channel, Nickelodeon, and History Channel. Oh, and Animal Planet. Mm -hmm. Come on. I had a rotation that I would do. Um, yeah. So those those are. I highly recommend Rango. If you I like Rango movies. too, but it's weird because when I thought of that movie, when I saw it, I just thought of you. Yeah. Like, oh, I, I like that movie. I like that movie. Yeah, that's like that's my favorite fun. movie of the past decade. Um, Have you ever heard this song, Ringo? Ringo? Not, not by Ringo Starr. So it's an old cowboy song. I don't it always think makes so. you think of Ringo now. I don't think so. I'll play it for you. Okay. okay. Well, thanks for tuning in to our top so ten much. list. If you'd like to show us your top ten, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach out to us at any of our social media sites where you can communicate with us on the daily because we are lonely people uh, who enjoy conversation. So lonely that her is my best movie. <laughs> I th one thing I want to end on is I feel like now looking at our lists, it's like very curated to our tastes and styles. I would hope so. Well, yeah, but I mean... I don't know, more fitting than I would have thought. In yeah, a way. That, that's you good. Have a that lot means of, we put time into it. Yeah, because mine 
I think, had a pretty strong theme yeah. going through it. Well, it's um, it's your place. I'm artificial. <laughs> uh, but I'm not. I'm. He's real. I'm real. I'm organic. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm technically doubly organic. Doubly. Read the book. Serve the text. He's better than us. No. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, catch you on the next one. Bye. Wow, look at this webcam.